Oh, welcome to old classic car now. The plan for this evening is to fire up the 1972 Volvo 164 that I've been fiddling with over recent weeks. Take it for a quick spin and just see how well it runs and drives. It's all legal now, taxed, insured, etc. All the levels are topped up. It seems to start up, it seems to run, it seems to brake okay now that I've sorted the rear brakes. So really this is just its first little test drive just to try out the basics and just make sure that it's there or thereabouts. So let's fire up and see how it goes. Okay, I did some fuel the other day, so that should help. Pop it into park, because in neutral it isn't going to start. So in theory, that should be okay. I've turned the battery isolator on. So you always disconnect batteries when you can. Okay, let's see if it'll go. Well, a little bit of a churn there just to get it to fire up, but I mean it's not been on the road since 2018 so we can forgive it a few little burps and hiccups. The real, the objective of this little run is to basically just go down the road and back and just see exactly how well things are running. I've, I've got a bit of a thought about the temperature, I think it may be running a little bit warm. It certainly reads warm on the gauge, although the radiator doesn't feel super hot. Um, and I did notice when I was rooting through the glove box there is a temperature sender, a new temperature sender in the box. I tried to fit that the other evening, um, but sadly it wouldn't fit, the thread wasn't quite right, so I had to reinstate the original one. So I'm wondering if maybe the previous owner had similar thoughts that maybe the sender wasn't quite as accurate as it could be, so that's something I probably need to keep a look, a look at, um, have a look at and just keep an eye on the uh, coolant level and so on. But yeah, let's back her out and just see if we can head off down the road just for its first run out, first test drive. Foot on the brake. I don't like this digital taco, but it is quite useful. 713 RPM. There are various modifications on this car which I would like to get rid of. Let's just gently back her out. you've seen the earlier videos you'll know this is a bit of a, a blast from the past for me because back in the 1970s dad had a Volvo 144S which was the same basic shape as this albeit with a four cylinder engine with twin carburetors so this the shape of this car is very reminiscent of that old 144S SNE 57K right I can't really do a three point turn holding the camera so uh, I'll be back in the mo right seatbelt on not something I'm used to with these old cars, but Volvo were ahead of their time when it came to road safety and all that. So, in drive, got a drop of fuel, not a huge amount, but enough. And let's go and have a quick spin down the road and just see how she feels. In particular, cooling system and brakes, those are the things I'm mainly interested in. Well, the Speedo took about a quarter of a mile to wake up, but seems to be working for us now. Keeping a very close eye on the temperature gauge. Right, well we've stopped, just pulled over for a moment, we've done a couple of miles, so we'll just have a quick look just to make sure nothing's falling off. Um, like I say, it's only been three years since the car was on the road, so all being well, it should settle down reasonably quickly, but you never quite know how well it ran, even when the old boy that had it before was driving it. These Volvo 164s, they're not all that common now. You don't see them in use too often. I don't suppose they're the most frugal of vehicles ever invented, which probably means that a lot of them have been broken for parts and so on, which is a shame, as I think they're quite a nice looking car, really. They're not flashy, they're not like a Jaguar or curves and curvaceous with a wonderful interior. They're very sort of fairly simplistic, very much the Swedish way of doing things, you know. Um, but I don't, I don't really have a problem with that, I quite like that. I like the simplicity. 
it's not trying to be something it isn't it's just a well-made comfortable cruiser there's no race car that's for sure I think it's quite a nice old thing so what we'll do is I'll just let it settle down for a moment I'll have a peer underneath to make sure I shall do that now make sure there's nothing leaking there's those nice number plates very nice have a quick peer under here well, I can't hear any hisses or pops or bangs I can't see any leaks yet so you never quite know so we'll set off again in a few moments and just go for a gentle run round, try to avoid traffic and just like I say, just try and do sort of slightly longer trips every time. Wait, park up, check things, and then have another go. Go a bit further until you sort of build up confidence in the car, because until you know a car, you don't know what it can and cannot do. Especially when it's one that's a few years old. And this is, what, 1972? About to get flattened, I think. So this is a 1972. And, uh, yeah. Some modern BMW. I'm just keeping an eye on the temperature gauge. I noticed when I switched off, left it for a couple of minutes, then switched it back on again, the gauge had gone up to about here, the top of the green. As if you get it like heat soak when you switch it off. Sometimes I've had this before, the temperature creeps up and then it starts dropping back again as the engine cools down. I've had this before. As soon as I started it, the temperature dropped down to just over half and it just seems to have settled just above half at the moment. So I think the thing to do is we'll go for a quick spin just down the lanes, take it easy, just keep a very close eye on the temperature and just get a feel for exactly how the temperature gauge on this particular car works. Every old car has its own little quirks and uh, idiosyncrasies and I'm sure this one's no different. So I'll keep an eye on this, that tells me how things are doing with the engine temperature and from that I should be able to tell the general health of the engine. So let's go and put another mile or two on it. Here's I'm not the only one travelling this evening. So back to the Volvo, the tick over seems a little bit high, 1229. Maybe there's uh, something stuck somewhere. But temperature seems to stay just over half when driving around and at idle. Because obviously sometimes the risk is it's okay when you're driving along. But if it's prone, a car's prone to overheating, then as soon as you come to a stop and the flow of air through the radiator ceases, the temperature just rockets up. But this seems to be holding at just over half, so that's reasonably encouraging. Um, like I said, I've done a couple of miles now, so we'll just carry on a little bit further and uh, keep an eye on things and see where we end up. Well, so far things look reasonably positive. Tick over is a little bit high, so I need to have a read up on that just to see what's involved in adjusting the tick over. The 164E Volvo has the Bosch D Jetronic fuel injection, so I need to sort of get my head around that a little bit. But for a first run out for sort of two or three, four miles, it seems to be running okay. Like I said, temperature's a little higher than I'm comfortable with, but it's not too bad. And that may well settle down. So uh, I think we'll stagger back to base now and then uh, have a quick poke around under the bonnet. 
Well, we're back at home now. We've probably done five or six miles in total, which is okay as a, a bedding in test drive, if you like. The I may have mentioned in the previous video, the thermostat housing was all corroded at the top, so I bought a new one of those, new thermostat and seal. That's been done. It looks like the alternator has been changed not too long ago as well, which is good news. Hoses are okay. The top hose is hot, as you would expect. Let's have a look at the one down below. Obviously the engine's not running now, because otherwise I won't be able to do this. Let's try that one. The bottom hose is quite warm, but a lot cooler than that one. So that's okay. That one is too, almost too hot to keep your hand on. This one is cooler. Not a huge amount cooler. Let's just have a look at the actual radiator itself. Sometimes if you put your hand on the core you can tell where the cool spots are if there are any. If there's a problem with a blocked radiator then you get cool spots. I remember on the Morris Miner that I used to run in 1952 the coolant only used to go down the centre of the radiator either side. It stayed cool all the time. What you want to feel is uniform hot at the top. Which this is actually. That's good. So it's uniform hot at the top just as is this. And you want to feel it cooler as you get to the bottom and it wants to be uniform slightly slightly warmer at the outside edges but not too much Let's see if we can get down this side it's not very easy with this big fan that's cooler so I don't think the radiator is a million miles out so we'll just really keep an eye on it what I do need to look at is the idle it's idling at about 1200 rpm once it's warmed up which is a bit too much, it clunks a bit when you go into gear as you'd expect because it's like having your foot on the accelerator when you're trying to put it into drive um, from park but that's not bad well it's a few days later and I have been reading up on these things radiator caps and their importance on maintaining the correct pressure inside the cooling system of the engine and what I hadn't realised is that the higher the pressure within reason the more pressure there is that raises the boiling point of the coolant and that is obviously a very good thing when it comes to the cooling system working efficiently now one of the things that you have to check is the radiator cap now this cap looks like it's probably the original from 1972 and it is probably well due for replacement and i've also noticed that the rubber seal which should be in here is missing altogether because this goes on the expansion tank which is over here so you've got a plain cap on here and the expansion tank over here has the pressure cap comme ça. now this is obviously not working very well uh, basically if the pressure is too low then the boiling point of the coolant isn't raised enough and it boils up it's all it's all very complicated but basically this has to work properly so i thought well for the, for a few pounds i'll go and order one of these so i bought one online and i'm just waiting for it to be delivered that was a couple of days ago um, it's friday today so whether it'll arrive tomorrow morning or not i don't know so i've just been waiting for that to come but then today i came into the garage and remembered that i've got a box of miscellaneous new old stock radiator caps and thermostats and the first one that i pulled out was this Bradex one. This is a 1970s new old stock radiator cap and lo if I look on the back at the cars that it will fit. We've got Alphas, Austin, Austin Healey, BMW, Ford, MG, Morris, Opel, Rover and various Volvos including Volvo 164 from 66 to 74 so I had one in stock all along in fact I've got at least two or three of these sat in that box back, at, back down there so I needn't have waited at all and I needn't have gone online and bought one at all so that's handy so I'm going to pop this on here and then we will take it for another run check the levels and stuff take it for another run and just see how she performs because if you remember when I last took it out it ran okay but once you switched it off the temperature did shoot up quite a lot and I expect it to go up a little bit before it comes down but it did seem to go up a bit too much so I'm hoping a correct cap with a good rubber seal on it will just do the job better than this which is probably the thick end of 50 years old I suspect that's a proper Volvo cap and I suspect that's been on for many many years and how long it's been without the seal 
in here I really don't know but it's never going to work properly this is meant to be a sealed system and if it's able to draw in air the pressure is never going to work correctly and if the pressure doesn't get high enough and the boiling point of the coolant doesn't get raised to the correct amount then the coolant vaporizes and turns to steam well before it should do and it just compromises the whole efficiency of the cooling system of the engine so this simple thing which costs under £10 to replace um, it can completely disrupt the entire operation of the system the radiator, the water pump, the coolant around the engine, the cylinder head and so on so I'm hoping that fitting this new cap on will just sort things out a little bit and just steady things in the cooling department so let's pop this on and then uh, we might take it for a quick spin and just see if it makes any difference at all fingers crossed for a second spin and just see see how we get on eh? It sounds really, it feels really smooth and it sounds nice. Yeah, it seems alright doesn't it? So again we're just monitoring the temperature just to see how it behaves with the correct cap on it now. Okay, well it's the next morning and I think we'll take it for another little test drive. The Volvo had a run out yesterday evening with its new radiator cap and that seems to be controlling the temperature better. It probably still runs a little bit warmer than it should do, but it's better. That's the new cap over there. And it just seems to be managing everything at just that little bit more efficiently. So I think we'll put a drop of extra fuel in. I'm going to take this water container with me just in case of emergencies and we'll go for a little bit longer run now and just uh, well just keep an eye on things to see how it drives and performs on a slightly longer trip nice old wasso locking fuel filler cap Go and get an apple. Go and get an apple. No, not in here. Go and get an apple. Go on, drop it. Okay, well we're up and running, it did take a couple of churns to make it start, but as it's not been in regular use for a few years I can forgive it that. I'll just let it warm up a little bit, there's a bit of extra fuel in there now. My co-pilot for today has four legs, and yes she is restrained before anyone asks. So let's just go for a little run down the road, a little bit further than we've done before, and we'll just see how we go with the old Volvo. Well, we've just pulled over for a quick pit stop. Now, touch wood, temperature-wise, things seem to be behaving a little bit better now. It all seems to be just settling down a little bit. What I did think, actually, when I was walking up to it before, when I was taking a bit of video of it driving along and setting the camera up, looking at the badges on the front, they're probably blocking about a third of the radiator grill. So, I think the next thing to do is to whiz off those badges. They do look a little bit fussy. I've been in two minds about them and to be honest if it helps it run just a little bit better a little bit cooler even if it's only a few degrees then it's worth removing them maybe keep one but generally i think we'll remove those badges um, but touch wood it seems to run okay we've done a few miles today stop start a few times just to see how the heat 
uh, copes with things, you know, when you switch it off and switch it back on again just to monitor the temperature and touch wood, it's looking quite promising now. I did actually stop just uh, about half a mile away and got chatting to a bloke for about half an hour about old cars. He's got a collection of cars and lorries and things, so it's, it's surprising who's around and who's got what when you actually start speaking to people. And running an old car like this, I mean this is 1972, this particular Volvo 164, um, you just get chatting to people, you know, because you don't see that many old cars in regular use outside of shows nowadays, it seems. So, yeah, when the weather's like this, get those old cars out. Anyway, I think we'll potter back to the house now. This is, I think, the third, maybe the fourth test run we've done in the old Volvo since I've had it. Like I say, it's been out a few times this week, just on ever longer trips just to bed things in and just see where things are at, what needs doing. There's a slight rattle on the exhaust, which must be a loose bracket somewhere. So that's not, not a great concern, to be honest. Um, and the first impressions of the Volvo are pretty positive. I mean, it's not an XJ to drive, for example. I mean, that's a contemporary car with a big straight six in it. Uh, this has a steering box as opposed to the rack and pinion in the Jaguar, and the Jaguar is a lot more direct. This isn't bad actually it's pretty good for a steering box car it's actually pretty good the steering is good but it doesn't compare to a decent rack and pinion setup and the engine is a little bit fussy than I thought but there may be a bit of setup work to do there still but early impressions are it should work quite well as a comfy cruiser it's no sports car but it was never going to be it's a comfy old barge really for cruising around in a little bit unusual now like I said in one of the early videos, part of this was all about nostalgia for me because Dad had a 144S back in the 1970s which ended in 57k, the registration number. So when I saw this 58k and very similar in size, shape and so on, it just took me back to holidays in South Wales and so on. And the old car world is fueled by and large by nostalgia for a lot of people. People buy cars that they remember growing up with. And this is a classic case in point, really. So, anyway, it's getting time for, you know, near time for lunch now. So I think we'll stagger back. I hope this little video and these little test drives of the Volvo were of interest. So please check out some of the other videos on the channel. We'll be doing more very soon. Bye for now. Badges removed.